burning. Bill was heating water on the wood stove. He would use it to fill the small tin tub he used for bathing. It was nearly sunset. He'd been working at this since late morning. He walked with two buckets a half mile to the water faucet, then lugged them back to the two-story shack. This was repeated 15 times, a total of seven and a half miles, half of it carrying a heavy load. He saved one bucket of water, placing it carefully next to the stove, to use later for drinking and washing up. He poured the rest of the water into one of the two tubs, making a muddy puddle on the dirt floor as well. Then he started a fire on the wood stove to heat the water, three parts at a time, and poured into the second tub for his bath. The room filled with smoke and steam and heat. It was a sweaty business. The bath would feel good. Will repeated this routine twice a week. It was a source of pride. His girlfriend, Sabra, although willing to live in the cabin and deal with the wood stove for cooking and kerosene lamps for light, would nevertheless walk a half mile every day to use a neighbor's shower. Will put up with this because they were good together and she had a day job in a law office. Will's income contribution was selling bamboo flutes in the town square. He cut the bamboo himself and made the holes with nails heated on the wood stove. Sometimes he made plates and cups on the old potter's wheel kept in a corner of the kitchen. The boy sat at the kitchen table playing with some tarot cards and watching as Will prepared his bath water. He was chain smoking joints and cigarettes. He had been for hours. The jar lid he used for an ashtray overflowed with ash and used matches. Will and Sabra owned an old battery powered record player, one of Will's concessions to modernity, and two LPs, one of Bob Dylan and the other an old folk race recording of Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. Sonny and Brownie were playing at the moment. Well, the world's too wide. I'm in it too long. Try traveling together, we just couldn't get along. I walk on, walk on, walk on, walk on. I'm going to keep on walking till I find my way back home. The boy loved this stuff. He laughed happily when Will sang along and clapped with delight when Will pulled out a harmonica and tried to follow along with Sonny. Teach me, Will, said the boy. I want to play the harp. Will laughed. Man, you haven't even learned how to use the potter's wheel. I thought you were going to practice that, and here you are sitting around getting stoned. I made some flutes today, Will, three of them. Well, that's good, good for you. Why don't you try and see if you can throw a cup on that wheel there? Come on, do it, you lazy ass. The boy giggled and went to the potter's wheel. He grabbed a handful of clay and slapped it to the center of the wheel. He began kicking the wheel and leaned forward to put his weight onto the clay. That's it, said Will. Center that bitch. You gotta put all your weight into it. Here, get up, let me show you again. The boy gave his seat to Will. Will sat down and began kicking the wheel. When he leaned forward and grabbed the clay, his long blonde hair fell into it, and he laughed. He struggled to get his hair unstuck from the clay. Oops, he said. Better fix that. Hey, bring me a strip of cloth from over there. He pointed to the counter. Now you take that strip of cloth and tie back my hair in a ponytail. I don't want to get even more of this clay all over it. The boy obeyed and fetched the ribbon of cloth from the counter. He carefully shook the dust out of it and stood next to Will, and collected the long hair in his hands, lightly touching Will's shoulders. He noticed the scent of the clay in Will's hair. He tied it back in a ponytail and fixed it with a bow. There, Will, how's that? Good boy, Will told him. Thanks, man. Now watch how I do this. Will leaned forward firmly into the clay and pressed with his open palms. The muscles of his arms and shoulders tensed with the effort. See how it starts to balance? He asked. The boy studied Will's movements, nodded his head several times. The clay was becoming an even shape, bulges disappearing, smoothing out. Okay, said Will. I think I found the center. Now watch this. Suddenly, he dipped his fingers into the top of the clay, and like magic, it formed into a perfect cup as he pulled up the sides. Wow, said the boy. Will took his fists and smashed the clay back down. Okay, he said, now you try. Will got up, and the boy took his place at the wheel and began kicking. 
Will poured the last bucket of hot water into the tin tub and prepared to bathe. He removed his sandals and cutoffs to step naked into the tub as the boy washed and kicked. Remaining on his feet, water up to his mid calves, Will bent over and began splashing himself. The boy squeezed the clay as hard as he could. Almost standing on the wheel, he pushed with all the weight of his upper torso until his eyes began to tear. He felt the tension in his shoulders and his arms. He felt the cold red clay oozing between his fingers. He could sense the imbalance as it rocked against his hands with its uneven pressure. He raised one hand off the clay and slammed it with his fist, then did the same with the other hand. He repeated this in a one-two boxing sort of motion until his shoulders ached. Bang! Bang! The thud of his fist into the yielding clay felt good. He caught the rhythm of the blues off the stereo in his fists and in his swinging leg. It felt like a dance and gave him a sort of joy. Then he pressed both palms once more into the clay, leaning forward and trying to find the perfect balance that Will had demonstrated. He looked towards Will, smiling with delight. Will straightened up and began soaping his chest and then his genitals. The boy stared. Will glanced over at him and laughed. <laughs> you like looking, huh? The boy blushed and turned his attention back to the clay. He tried to make a sarcastic laugh. Ha, 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 he grunted. Oh, forget about it, man, said Will. I'm just teasing you. Don't be so sensitive. The boy leaned again into the clay, pressing his face so close now he could smell it. He inhaled deeply and squeezed, then pounded again with his fist. He finally thought he had found the center. Imitating Will as well as he could, he thrust his fingers into the center and tried to pull the clay up into a cup. It rose a little bit, and for a moment he flushed with excitement and pride, but then it collapsed, and he gave up in frustration. I can't find the center, Will, he said. Keep practicing, man. You'll get it. I promise. Will stepped out of the tub and began drying himself off. Then he snapped the wet towel at the boy as he left the room. The boy put the clay away on a shelf, wrapping it airtight in plastic to keep it moist. Then he carried the tin tub outside by the side of the cabin and poured the dirty bath water into the sand. The sunset was beautiful. He stopped to admire it. He felt a pressure in his chest like he wanted to cry. He listened to Brownie McGee singing. Trouble in mind, trouble in mind, I'm blue. But I won't be blue always. Sun's gold shine. Through my back door someday. The music stopped. He went back to the kitchen to find Sabre had lifted the needle off the record and was dropping a bag full of groceries onto the table. Oh, hi, she said. Where's Will? Oh, I think he went upstairs to dress. Will came in then, wearing jeans and t-shirt, his hair combed out and no longer tied back, but flowing over his shoulders. Hi there, he said taking Sabre by the hips and pulling her towards him for a deep kiss. The boy began unpacking the food. Sabre said, I'll take care of that. I'm going to make a good dinner tonight. I've got chicken and potatoes and salad. It'll be a feast. Right on, Will cried out. Yeah, said the boy. Will began stoking the stove fire, and Sabre lifted a frying pan off of a nail over the window and filled it with oil. She began dredging chicken pieces in flour, salt, and pepper. The boy began cutting up vegetables for a salad. Will rolled another joint, which they all shared. Thanks, Sabre, this'll be great, said the boy. Do y'all remember, asked Will, when we used to live with our parents and we'd be eating like this every night? Not me, said Sabre, I never wanted to get fat. How about it, man, Will asked the boy. Y'all remember your mama's good cooking? Ah, oh, Will, said the boy, I don't think about that stuff. After dinner, Will and Sabre washed up the dishes and the boy swept out the kitchen and emptied the charred remains of the fire from the stove. By now, it was dark. The boy took one of the kerosene lamps and a book upstairs. He placed the lamp in the window, really just a hole in the wall, lifted the chimney and lit it carefully, then used the flame to light up his last joint of the day. He finished the joint, snuffed it out, and set it carefully on the windowsill for later. Then he stripped off his clothes, climbed into the bed, and settled down to read. 
Soon he heard Will and Sabre climbing up the staircase, walking into the bedroom next door. Sabre was giggling. He heard a slapping sound, then a thud. He tried to keep reading, but the noises were distracting. Sabre was squealing, and he could hear Will pant. Obviously, they were making love, and soon there was a steady thud as they built toward the climax. The boy began to feel angry. He wanted to read his book. He wanted to listen. He wanted to hit somebody. Instead, he hit the wall by his bed. That felt good, so he hit it again. In a moment, he was pounding the wall beneath the window, still in time with the lovers. Suddenly, the kerosene lamp fell out of the windowsill and onto the mattress. He grabbed it quickly to return it to the sill, but it dropped out of the window into the dry grass below. The bit of curtain which hung from the window halfway down the outside wall began to burn. His mattress, too, was smoldering. He leapt out of the bed, crying, Will! Will! A moment later, Will rushed into the room naked, screaming, What is it? What is it? Will quickly grasped the situation. He grabbed the smoldering mattress and began dragging it down the staircase. He stopped and told the boy, Drag this outside and throw dirt on it. Then Will rushed to the kitchen and got the remains of his water supply and took it outside and tossed it onto the burning tree. He then began grabbing sand off the ground throwing it at the fighter. It worked. The crisis was over. The boy made it outside with the mattress, and together they beat it with sticks and threw dirt onto it until it was no longer smoldering. They stood naked in the moonlight, throwing their bodies into the movement as they swung their branches into the mattress. The boy pounded the mattress until his muscles hurt. Finally, Will said, that's enough. They stood panting in the moonlight. Come on. I'll help you get this mattress back upstairs so y'all can go to sleep. Together, they dragged the mattress back to the bedroom. Man, said Will, you got to be more careful, okay? We're lucky you didn't burn the whole place down. Okay, Will, said the boy. I'm sorry. Really, I am. We'll talk about it in the morning, said Will, and left him alone. A few moments later, the boy could overhear Will and Sabre talking. He's got to go, Will, said Sabre. I know you like him and you worry about him, but he's not our problem. He's been here for a month. Send him home. He should be with his parents. He should be in school. I don't know, said Will. I think he's happy here. He likes us. He likes you. Oh, come on. You know what I'm saying. Will, it's not okay. He gives me the creeps. And he nearly burned the house down. You know he did. Are you okay with that? Nah, I reckon not. You're damn right, you reckon not. What do you want me to do? You have to tell him to leave in the morning. He can go into town with you, and you can put him on a bus or something. You know it's the right thing to do. The boy gathered his few things, stuffing his ratty backpack with some jeans and t-shirts and his pack of tarot cards. He slipped downstairs and took some dope from the tin can on the stove and a pouch of tobacco and rolling papers. He took one of Will's flutes and slipped out the door. 